Hello everyone, this is my third generation Toyota pickup 22RE engine. Today we will be making a video and I will be going over the 22RE engine. Uh, this is the best of my knowledge. I will go ahead and name every part because I know a lot of folks um, that are new to the 22RE engine. They might want to know a little bit more about the motor, uh, where parts are, which part is what. When I first bought this truck, um, I didn't know much about the 22RE and I kind of researched as I went and didn't find much video of the engine or the engine bay in particular. So I'm going to just go ahead from the left to right and we'll just go ahead and name each part. I won't go ahead into details and explain each part and what they do, but we're just going to go <coughs> and name where the parts are and go from there. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. If I'm wrong about something or if I don't know about a different a particular part, feel free to help me out in the comment section below. <laughs> and we'll go from there. First and foremost, this is the 22RE engine. Uh, it's pretty much stock. Haven't done much modification to it. I did remove the EGR and in air inlet injection along with the charcoal canister so you won't see that in this engine but you might see it in your engine bay so let's start from the left to right this is your windshield fluid bottle go ahead and fill that up this is your battery your positive terminal your negative terminal this is your fuse box one of your fuse box this is the fuse box up in the hood and then there's also another fuse box fuse box on your driver's side um, near the kick panel on the below. This is where your diagnostic is if you want to jump your terminal and etc etc do your timing and stuff like that this is where it's at. I don't know what this is so feel free to help me out in the comment section below um, just go ahead and we'll name this black thing on the passenger top. This is your throttle cable <laughs> this is this you know when you press gas this is what makes your engine go this is your intake manifold. Below here is your intake manifold. This piece here is called your intake plenum. Plenum or something like that. This piece here is your intake. I forgot this piece is, but this is the plenum and this is its own individual piece. I forgot what the name is, but I know what it is. <laughs> this is your intake tube that goes into your mass flow air sensor. This is your mass flow air sensor. And then this is your air filter along with your air box. All right. Radiator, this is your radiator. Make sure you have a nice radiator. If your radiator is bad, don't go and buy the cheap one that are plastic. Make sure you get the one that are metals. From what I heard of, it's always best to get the metal one. This is your coolant bottle, reservoir. This is where your thermostat is. If you remove this bolt and this bolt, your thermostat is in there. So if your thermostat overgo is bad, it's really easy to do. Just remove these two bolts and then pop this guy out and then change it out. <laughs> your coolant will be flowing out, so it might be best to just drain all your coolant below and do a flush while you're at it. This piece here is your cold start injection. <clears throat> There's a little piece right here. It's your, um, I just replaced this. I totally forgot what it is, but I'll leave it in the comments section below where I'll put a down below right there is your oil filter that's your oil filter I apologize for being in the dark this piece right here is your coolant temp sensor I actually have mine uh, the plug is not the best so it's just kind of wired up in there but that's your coolant temp sensor if you ever have an issue with your gauge not reading that might be the problem change out your coolant temp sensor uh, these are your air injections and what else we have? <clears throat> this is your TPS. TPS is your throttle position sensor. This right here, this little screw right here, left and right counterclockwise. This is your idle con idler. You control that. Turn right, tight, right, left, loose to control your idle. Um, if you want to close up your idle, go right. If you want to loosen up, go left. We have your valve cover. So you have your valve cover is held by four bolts. One, two, three, four. These are called your acorn, acorn nuts along with your washers. Whenever you tighten your valve cover, do not over tighten these guys. Do not over tighten these. You want these to be just nice and snug, just right when these uh, start, right when the rubber start mushing. This is where you fill up your oil. Pretty self explanatory. This is your distributor. This is your timing control to 
to adjust your timing this is the nut you lose and then this will make your distributor move back and forth spark plugs you have four spark plugs one two three four really really easy to access to thank goodness for uh toyota for doing that <laughs> your engine oil check your engine oil dipstick right here so right below your distributor is your power steering and you have your alternator which is right here this is your fan you guys can't really see it but it's under this tube behind the fan is where your um gosh i'm having i'm having such a brain for i can't i can't think of anything behind your fan is where your uh water pump is behind behind this is where your oil pump the oil pump is right there this guy here is your igniter you can see how it ignites it follows right here you go to your distributor and sends power brake booster this is your brake fluid sorry i apologize for that <laughs> brake fluid master cylinder this is your power steering use dextron type atf over here is your master cylinder for your this is for your slay cylinder same thing dot fluid you don't have this but this is my arb air compressor this is you probably won't have nothing over here you probably won't have this too this is for my secondary battery i have a dual battery setup so you don't you you won't have that this is your exhaust manifold this is your power steering belt and then the other belt is your alternator belt so your power steering belt connects to your power steering the alternator belt connects to the alternator pretty self-explanatory if you have your ac which i don't have my ac you will have a third belt your ac belt and what else are we missing this silver thing here this is my voltage regulator for my alternator because I have a high amp alternator. I have a premier welder alternator, so you won't have that because yours is built into your alternator. But this is external voltage regulator, so don't mind that. I do have a snorkel setup, DIY homemade snorkel. It's coolant over reservoir. And what else we have here? That's pretty much it that I could think of right now. Those are your main things that you might be questioning when you uh, when you are doing your, if you're new to the 22RE. Right below there, you guys see this little green sensor? This one on the right hand. My buddy, his Toyota 22RE, uh, when we bought it this early year, it would start and then it would just die when it warm up or it will just die once in a while and we found out that it was because of that green sensor so we replaced that sensor if you guys know what that one is called let me know in the comment section and also if you know what this one next to it's called let me know in the comment section below as well but that's just a FYI for anybody that might be having that issue where your truck just dies when it's running uh, check out that sensor just get a replace they were able to get one at the local parts store so I do have the EGR delay, so a lot of my EGR um, hoses and all that other junk is out. But if you guys still have yours, uh, you might want to consider removing it if you don't have emission in your city, state. So that's pretty much it, guys. I can't really think of anything on top of my head right now. Uh, you have the you have the bottom of the tr engine as far as the oil pan, oil drain, and this is the radiator. Let me go over the radiator real quick. I want to show you where the radiator drain is. So you guys may see this tube right here. This tube, there's a little knob right there. You guys see that knob? So you basically just loosen that. Turn it all the way to the left if we want to loosen up. If you want to drain your, if you want to drain your radiator, just loosen all that up. Make sure you do when the engine is cold, or else you'll be messing with hot coolant. But loosen that up, and then all your radiator will come, or your coolant will come out. And then also make sure you open up your valve, your uh, radiator cap, so it can flow easily. So that's one way to drain your radiator. But also, if you want to do a full flush, you also want to make sure you drain the radiator the coolant that's in your engine block and to do that there's another plug right over here 
on the driver's side. You guys see that plug right there? I'm gonna try to zoom in. You guys see that plug right there? <clears throat> if you're doing a cool, a full coolant flush, you want to drain out your radiator and also release this bolt right here. And then this bolt will release all the coolant from your block. I believe last time I did it, it was a 17 mil or a 19 mil. Um, it's not hard to do, so make sure you just have some extension or make sure you have like a ratchet wrench. So that is all for this video guys. Hope you guys find this video hopeful. This is a quick overall anatomy of the 22RE engine. One of the best four cylinder engine ever produced by Toyota. Not the strongest, not the strongest, but if you want something reliable, this engine is a beast. If you guys are new to the channel, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Make sure you guys follow my Instagram at nettynew underscore 4x4, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.